Hey there folks, Aldershot here, and today we're going to do an impression on Axiom Verge. It's developed by Thomas Hap Games, and it's on sale on Steam at the regular price, around $20 USD. Um, if you're unfamiliar with Axiom Verge, to sum it up quickly, I think uh, a good way to put it is a Metroid-like, right? So if you played any of those old school games, this game might look and seem a little bit familiar to you. Now, from the title screen already, I think you guys can clearly see that this is definitely a uh, 8 or 16-bit throwback sort of game, right? Now, at the end, end of the video, we'll talk a little bit more about the game's options as well as any extra, extra features that the game might have. But for the time being, we're going to just jump into a game that we already got started. Uh, now, looking at my save file, I think you guys can clearly see <laughs> that I got over four hours into the game currently um, although you know given about 30 minutes of that it was just kind of dicking around in preparation for this video but still the game is at uh, over four hours regardless and from the stats that we're looking at uh, clearly states that I've yet to discover even 30 percent of the overall map and yet to discover uh, over 20 percent of the available items and pickups and upgrades that's available in Axiom Verge. So to say the least, I think we can already conclude that this game is quite large. <laughs> like I said, I'm already, already 44 hours in, over 4 hours in, and from the looks of it, I've yet to actually scratch the surface of Axiom Verge. But for the time being, let's just jump into a game that we got going so we can talk a little bit more about it. We're going to load into this uh, safe room here. Quite a familiar concept if you played uh, old school Castlevanias or Metroid games, I think. Um, I think I'll be kind of referencing those games quite a lot throughout this video, so do uh, be aware of that. <laughs> and I think you guys can probably see why is that. But anyways, this is Axiom Verge, right? And much like the old school Castlevania games or the Metroid games of the past, uh, we have this map here. It is a tile-based map, and as you can see, is a 2D platform adventurer. Um, and you kind of go from tile to tile, map to map, uh, trying to find uh, new upgrades and items and all that kind of good stuff. Now over here is a red door. This will take us to a boss fight. Uh, we'll check that out at the end of the video. I fought him and died. <laughs> I'm kind of stuck at this guy currently, but we'll explore the boss at the end of the video so we can, we can show you guys what the boss fights are like in this game. But for the time being, what we're going to do is kind of explore grounds that we've already explored and kind of try to look for secrets while we're doing that. Um, much like the old school Metroid or Castlevania games, uh, there are a pile of different secrets and hidden rooms and breakable blocks where you can enter other secret rooms from and all that kind of stuff. And there is a variety of different tools in this game, much like Metroid or Castlevania games, that allow you to uh, kind of find those secrets. For example, I'll show you this, this drill here can sometimes break away weaker blocks, although obviously these blocks are not one of those weaker blocks I'm talking about, as they're not being drilled through. But regardless, that's what it does. It can also harm enemies, if necessary, although the damage output is relatively weak. But some enemies do require the drill to actually do damage to them. They're like stone-based enemies, I guess. And then we also have this sort of weird hacking tool, where it can uncover glitchy pixels. This game's a little bit self-aware. And because of that, um, you can uncover glitchy pixels and find hidden entrances that way, right? Uh, we also have, I'll show you another little tool that we have. We have this little drone guy, which is great for getting into small spaces. Like, uh, for example, let's just pretend, for example, this, this little one-by-one -one space had a tunnel going through. Well, this uh, little droid will be able to crawl through and, you know, get to places where you can't otherwise, and it has a little laser beam thing going on here to help defend itself, but we don't need him right now, so we're going to call him back, right? Uh, the game also features a variety of different weapons for you to play with as well. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that for the time being. Let's actually kill some of these enemies so we don't get damaged ourselves. This is one of the stone creatures I'm talking about, where the drill is actually quite useful for 
uh, destroying him and his regular weapons is fairly ineffective against him. And I'll show you. I'll try to shoot him once he stops farting at me. He makes this weird kind of sound. That means uh, he's armored against whatever weapon I'm using against him and am not damaging him. So you need the, uh, the drill in order to hurt those types of mobs. But yeah, there's a variety of different weapons as well. I already showed you guys some of the tools that's available to help you navigate around the map. Um, like I said, the hacking tool and the drilling tool. But I also have this little lightning uh, device thing as well, which is great. It's a very, very powerful blast. It can shoot through walls, which offers a great tactical advantage. But it's relatively short range, right, as you can clearly see. Then you have uh, your more standard issue, Axiom Disruptor, the weapon that you start off with which is essentially a long-range kind of uh, blaster, right? Uh, quite reliable, I still use it very often, actually, especially for long-range um, combat. Then we also have the Hypo Atomizer, which is relatively new to me, actually, but it's kind of like the Disruptor, except it splits into multiple parts, giving it kind of a lighter, uh, wider girth in firing, I guess. Then we also have the Multi Disruptor, which is essentially like the blaster except it shoots in three directions and it's relatively shorter, right? As you can see, the pellets kind of end mid-shots. Then we also have the Nova, which is essentially kind of like a self-destructible blast, right? You can press the fire button again and it just blows up. Uh, but yeah, there are, there are some of the weapons. These are just, again, some of the weapons. These are just the ones that I've uncovered so far, as there is a lot of weapons that I've yet to actually discover. As you saw in the um, loading screen. <laughs> I've only gotten about 18% of the items uncovered. Uh, now the items do like vary, they're not all weapons, right? Some of them are utility tools, like I already showed you, to help you navigate around the map, kind of like uh, the drill or the hacking device. Uh, or even the trench coat. The trench coat allows me to kind of glitch through certain walls. We'll explore that when we get the opportunity, right? Um, but some upgrades are just kind of like buffers, right? I'll show you guys that, actually. So we can go into, not the map, not the map, there we go. <laughs> our inventory, right? Over here is our available weapons. And from the looks of this little box here, there is a lot of different weapons I've yet to discover. Assuming that each space is its own weapon uh, that has yet to be discovered. And over here are our, 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 there we go, English. <laughs> Our upgrade tools, our utility tools, our tools to help us get around um, the map essentially, help find secrets, to get through doors, etc, etc. And over here on the right side, I can't really highlight it, but you can see it's the power-ups. They are passives, which essentially increases your health, or your jumping uh, length, or your character speed, and armor, and all that kind of stuff, right? So, more passive abilities. I'm really bad at this part the map actually. Now I do like the level design in this game. It's very, very, very reminiscent of um, Metroid games and again old school Castlevania games before Symphony of the Night. Although some parts of the map I find a little bit more frustrating than other parts. The part that we just passed is actually uh, an example of that. I'll show you why. Actually, I can't because the enemies are dead. <laughs> but generally speaking, over here, right, there's not a lot of space here. So when I get hit by, like, an enemy fire, I would get fired back into the next zone, which is really annoying. But that's really one of the few cases I ran into just, like, really problematic kind of level design choices, I guess you can say. But generally speaking, is they're pretty interesting maps. Full of little secrets, like I said, uh, for you to discover. So, like I said, there's sometimes loose walls that you can drill through and find hidden areas and all that. But anyways, over here are some glitchy pixels, as you can clearly see. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the game is a little bit self-aware. It breaks the fourth wall a little bit. So because of these glitch glitchy pixels, because the game is aware that it's a pixel game, we can use our... whoops, I didn't mean to do that. We can use our hacking device, and I didn't mean to do that either, my bad. We can use our hacking device to get rid of those glitchy pixels. Right? Really, really useful. Sometimes those glitchy pixels are actually invisible and you have to bring them into reality, I guess you can say, and use them as a platform. But sometimes they serve as a wall to block your way, as you can clearly see. Um, but I think you guys can already see the, uh, the connection 
to the old school Castlevanias and the old school Metroid games I spoke about earlier. It's very, very similar in the way the game plays, right? Um, with the different weapons and utility tools to get through certain areas, uh, and the way that you would discover certain weapons and items is all very reminiscent of uh, old school Castlevania and Metroid games. Now, I I'm saying old school Castlevania because it's not really like Symphony of the Night. That's when the title Castlevania or the franchise Castlevania really took a big turn. Uh, where I added a whole bunch of RPG elements and stuff like that. This guy's kicking my ass. <laughs> uh, but this game doesn't have RPG elements. It doesn't have stats or character progressions. All about items, all about upgrades, and all that sort of stuff, right? So it's a lot closer to Metroid. Or the old Castlevanias before it went all RPG with Symphony of the Night. So that's why I'm kind of saying that. So be aware, if you're looking for Symphony of the Night, you're not going to get it here. It's a lot closer to... Uh, the older Castlevania games. Anyways, I kind of talked about the trench coat earlier and how it can kind of glitch through walls. I'll show you that now. When you find these one by one walls, you can double forward push, I guess you can say, and that will actually glitch you right through the wall, allowing you to get to areas otherwise unreachable, which is very useful, of course. And again, these tools and weapons I'm showing you off right now, they are. Uh, but a small, <laughs> but a small few of the whole. Like, there's a lot of different tools and weapons that I've yet to discover, that I don't even know about. So these are just a few. Like I said, I'm only about 30% in according to the save file. So yeah, lots, lots and lots of stuff to discover, right? A big game from the looks of it. Uh, anyways, let's see. There's some glitchy pixels there. So we'll make our way through this way. There we go. Perfect. Now I like the graphics as well, as you can see. It's um, a very nice throwback to to the old uh, 16 or 8-bit day era. I'm not really sure. Oh, we just died. When you die, there's not much of a punishment, by the way. It just sends you back to your previous save points. Uh, there's no life counts or anything like that. So just an inconvenience cost, I guess you can say. <laughs> right, but anyways, as I was saying, um, I like the visuals. It's a nice throwback to the 8-bit or 16-bit days. It's been a little while since I played those games, so I'm not really sure if this looks more like 8-bits or more like 16-bit. But it looks like that time of gaming. I'm sure you guys understand what I mean, right? And it does a good job at keeping to the spirits of those games as well. Now, with modern indie pixel games... Uh, a lot of the pixel games, honestly, they're not very good representations of the 8 or 16-bit era. They're more like artistic interpretations of those era of gaming uh, graphic styles. Whereas this one is a very, very true to the spirit uh, to those kind of old school games. And I like that, you know. Obviously, it's modernized for modern resolution, uh, with 10, true 1080p and all that stuff. and. And that's great too, of course. It's, it's nice and high definition. Uh, but at the same time, it keeps true to the spirits of days gone by, of those sorts of graphics. We're going to just quickly rush past this area, actually. It's an annoying, annoying part of the game. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's definitely one of the reasons why I really like the graphics of this game. It does a great job at representing its inspiration um, while you know modernizing it and making it nice and crisp and sharp and appealing to the eyes and all that kind of stuff uh, but other than the graphics the game features a great soundtrack as well I'm sure you guys have already been listening hopefully I have the volume loud enough but absolutely fantastic soundtrack you know it has all the beeps and the boops that you would expect from uh, the 18 or the 16-bit or 8-bit era kind of MIDI sounds that you would hear. Uh, but obviously it's much higher definition audio-wise than uh, the original <laughs> inspirations for this game. But, you know, again, much like the visuals, it keeps true to the spirit of its inspiration, right? It still sounds very much like 18 or 6 or 8, eight or 16-bit uh, kind of MIDIs and I definitely like that. Uh, so as far as aesthetics and audio is concerned, or just the general presentation of this game is 
absolutely fantastic. I got no real complaints, to be honest. It does a great job of keeping true to its inspiration while modernizing it. I'm doing really bad, by the way, guys. I'll stop going into that room. <laughs> I know it's a dead end anyways, and you'll find that anyways in this game, uh, much like the old school Castlevania games or Metroid games, um, where if you don't have the proper upgrade or pickup or whatever, you will find yourself in rooms uh, with a dead end where you have to kind of backtrack and kind of go over, comb over the map uh, to areas that you might not have been to yet. So there's going to be a degree of backtracking. Um, and because it, it's very heavily inspired from Metroid games and does a pretty good job of keeping true to its inspiration, uh, it does also carry over some of the perceived issues with the Metroid games as well, and one of it being is definitely uh, backtracking. There's going to be a lot of backtracking. Now to me, this this complaint is fairly subjective in my opinion. Um, for me, someone who's played a lot of these games as a kid, who was a big fan of the old school Resident Evil games, backtracking is not really what I would consider a mechanical flaw. But I know a lot of younger gamers who's more used to more modern games that can definitely be perceived as a negative. So it's definitely worth bringing up. If you're a little bit sensitive to backtracking, uh, if you get frustrated by that, then this game might prove a little bit frustrating because there is definitely a large degree of backtracking. Uh, because, like I said before, you're going to find areas where you just can't access until you find the right tools. Um, but it kind of, it kind of just sort of teases you because it sort of allows you to go into those rooms without allowing you to finish them because, you know, you don't have the right set upgrade, right? So, do be aware of that, alright? <laughs> Anyways, we're, we're still getting our asses kicked. I'm playing absolutely horribly. I, I just want to say, I normally play a lot better than this, <laughs> but I'm a little distracted by commentating, uh, obviously. But yeah, Axiom Verge, I gotta say, I've definitely enjoyed my time with it so far. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints, to be completely honest. My only real complaint, I guess, if I if I really had to make one, is actually this. Is, I feel to be kind of legitimate, to be honest, and um, and that's weapon balance. Uh, for example, as you can see, I'm cl I'm clearly using mostly the uh, what do you call it, the Kilver, right? The little short range lightning blaster gun. Uh, and during boss fights or other situations, sometimes I'll use the uh, the Axiom Disruptor or the Blaster, or what I like to call it because it's just the most reliable long-range weapon I have. Like the Hypo Atomizer, I don't really see a purpose for this game that I wouldn't use the Axiom Disruptor over. Uh, and then there's the Multi Disruptor, which again, I don't really use all that often. I use very, very few times when I need the angle that it shoots in, right? But usually, if I'm going for a short-range fire, I'd rather use the Kilver because it's more powerful. And it can shoot through walls, which is, a, you know, makes great utility use. Then the Nova, which is really slow, is not that powerful, so I don't find it all that reliable. So I find that weapon balance, as far as usability is concerned, is a little bit imbalanced. Like, I'm using mostly just the Axiom Disruptor and the Kelver mostly, right? Um, I kind of feel like a lot of the weapons are puff pieces in this game. Like, they're just putting them in there just to say, Hey, look, look at all the, uh, look at all the weapon variety that we have in this game. Although, secretly, the truth is, you're only going to be using uh, one or two weapons. At least from my current experience. Maybe later on in the game, again, because I'm not even, according to the safe I'm not even that far into the game. After four hours of play, <laughs> um, that maybe these weapons and other weapons I find will become more useful in certain situations where I find new enemy types. But, for the time being, again, I'm only using two weapons mostly. And the other weapons are just, what feels to me, are just puff pieces uh, for basically the store page. Look, we got weapons, lots of weapons. You'll only be using two though, right? <laughs> so that's uh, balance. I find weapon balance is, I think, a legitimate criticism of this game. Another criticism, criticism of this game I would have is uh, a relatively shallow death penalty, you know? I, I understand that this is the modern age and you know, uh, having a game over is relatively useless because you just load the game again from your last save and all that stuff. But at the same time, I'll show you guys. Like right now, I'm going. I want to head to the boss, right? 
and my last save file is much closer to the boss than I am currently, so seeing how there's no penalty for dying, I'm better off just jumping into this pile of goo, kill myself, and head to my last save point. And now I'm closer to the boss without any penalty, you know? <laughs> like, there's no currency in this game, which is understandable. Uh, so you don't lose currency, there's no lives in this game, so you don't lose a life. There's no limited continues in this game, so you don't lose continues. So death is really, really shallow in this game. Now luckily for us, the challenge is definitely not in, the, in dying in this game. That's really more of an inconvenience than anything else. The challenge in this game is definitely trying to look for secrets, trying to find the areas that you haven't unlocked yet, and killing the bosses. And the bosses are actually pretty interesting, I gotta say. All right. So overall, I've been very much enjoying Axiom Verge. I think um, it's a great throwback to the 8 or 16-bit era. Uh, it does a great job at emulating its inspirations without copying it, which is absolutely fantastic. And the visuals! Oh my god, the visuals are great. It does a great job at representing uh, 8 and 16-bit games gone by, and so does the sound, as I mentioned. It has this really interesting sort of... Uh, alien psychedelic sort of look to it it reminds me almost to of hr geiger in pixelated form actually and that's something i really appreciate about this game as well so overall i've really been enjoying axiom verge i have to say although weapon balance um and a better penalty for death would be welcomed in my opinion uh but anyways let's explore the boss so we can check out the boss fight a little bit. He's a tough cookie. I have no idea how to fight him, to be completely honest. I only tried fighting him once and died horribly, so... Uh, now, boss battles in this game are kind of interesting. I, I think most people would kind of expect this already, but I'll just state the obvious. Uh, most boss battles in this game, they serve as half a puzzle. Like, as you can see, I'm not actually doing damage to him. And I have no idea how to do damage to him currently. I kind of have to figure it out. And I can see that about almost all the boss battles I've encountered so far. Uh, your first try, you're probably not going to do too much. You just have to experiment and try to figure out what the hell you're supposed to do. Oh, oh hold on now. No, no, that's not it either. So yeah, just each boss battle will require a certain degree of experimenting. It's not just blasting them away. I'm sure there is probably a couple bosses that where you can just blast them away. But uh, out of the four boss, out of the four bosses that I fought. All of them require some sort of puzzle element. I have to figure out what to shoot first, or where is his weak spot, etc, etc. So, I think that's actually kind of familiar if you play this genre of games before. It's actually kind of a common idea to have bosses double up as sort of like a puzzle as well, right? Uh, but that's basically Axiom Verge. I kind of showed you the boss battle as well. I totally sucked at that. I have to figure out how to fight him <laughs> off camera. Um, but that's basically Asking Verge. Damn good game, I have to say. Really, really impressed. I, um, in my opinion, I, I mean, I mean, I'm gonna come from a place of bias because I played a lot of these games as a as a kid. So that's probably one reason why I enjoyed Axiom Verge so much. Uh, but with that said, it does a fantastic job at emulating the fun factor of those games gone by, right? And I really, really appreciate that. That's a great soundtrack. Love the soundtrack as well. Um, but anyways, uh, it's also really huge too. That's something else I want to point out in my closing remarks. It's absolutely a ginormous game, at least your first time through. Like I said, not even 30% way through, over four hours in. So I'm expecting anywhere between 10 to 12 hours when I actually complete the game. Uh, maybe even longer, depending on how derpy I am, right? But anyways, I'm not going to beat this boss anytime soon here. So we're going to get out of this, return to title. Let's see, sure, why not? That way we can finish up the video, talk about the options. Uh, gamepad configuration, fully configurable, which is fantastic. Then we also have keyboard configuration, also fully configurable, which is great. Uh, how, although I do recommend using the gamepad because, again, this is kind of an old school pixel platformer and just feels better with the gamepad. Uh, we also have video options. Now, this is a pixel game, so don't expect anti aliasing or texture quality <laughs> or anything of that sort. This is pretty much bare bones as far as pixel graphics options is concerned, but somewhat uh, expected. Although, I always say, even with Pixel 2D games, more graphical options, the better. Uh, just because 
more is better. <laughs> Why not? Then you have your audio sliders, which is pretty usual suspect right there. Uh, you can also choose what type of weapon uh, select style you, you like. I have it on ring, I find it easier, although you can put it on linear if you choose so. And you have multiple different languages as well, which is definitely welcome. So that's basically Axiom Verge. Oh, by the way, extra features as well. The game also features a speedrun mode with a bunch of different options, as you can clearly see. Uh, I don't know why it's still saying continue. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this is really cool because um, fans of this genre, a lot of the hardcore players, they're speedrunners, and they use mods and other things and glitches to help kind of... Um, make their playing field level, if that makes any sense. Well, in this game, Axiom Verge, they have it pre-installed already in the game, so you don't have to mod anything. Uh, multiple difficulties, any random element in this game is taken out, so everything's consistent. Uh, and also, the kind of uh, cutscenes and story parts of this game is taken out, so it doesn't waste time. So that's pretty damn cool, right, that this game uh, acknowledges that the high-end players will definitely want to speedrun it and built in their own speedrun mode into the game. That's definitely welcome and I think is an incredible uh, extra feature, especially for those who really get into Axiom Verge. But anyways, that's Axiom Verge, fantastic throwback to uh, games gone by and all that stuff. I absolutely love it, I definitely recommend it. Um, biggest complaints again is weapon balance uh, and also not enough of a penalty for dying I think that's a thing as well but other than that not much other complaints I've been really enjoying it it's a huge ass game you know lots of hours to play it looks great in my opinion sounds great in my opinion and plays great in my opinion so there you go Axiom Verge guys pretty damn good now, if you enjoyed this or found this informative in any way, you know, show me some love, like, share, fave, and comment. And if you haven't already, subscribe. I'll bring you more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Alter shout out.